That'd be great. Yeah. Hey everyone, we're here for our next session. We have Alex, uh, one of the co-founders of Rarible, and he'll be doing a talk on the Rarible protocol. And I'll let him take it from here. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Salnikov. I'm co-founder and head of product at Rarible. Rarible started uh, two years ago as the simplest to use minting platform and the marketplace. And that that played out and very successfully. Um, back then, uh, you couldn't you like back then you couldn't actually create NFTs without writing some code. So back then, you know, two years ago, the way to create the, your NFTs was to deploy smart contracts, to uh, uh, create the front end, to create your own experience, and then to list that NFT on the secondary marketplace. There was a couple projects that allowed you to create NFTs with. Uh, uh, with after after passing the verification and being invited to some closed platforms and variable taking that to the next step like just we decided that we want everyone to be able to mint nfts without asking anyone's permission and that that played out really really great uh the marketplace part of that really blown up as well uh, i'm I hope uh, I hope a lot of you guys know about Purple Marketplace. Um, just for those of, of you who do not, I'll, I'll give you a quick demo. So basically, Rarible Marketplace is the marketplace for secondary sales and the primary sales of any NFTs out there. So the uh, the platform indexes all the all the NFTs uh, and all the uh, all the trading activity from wearable exchange and from uh, other exchanges. For example, we we index um, trading activities from OpenSea and that allows you to build up this leaderboards like top collections across the whole Ethereum space, not only wearable now. So uh, this is how, how the website looks. Uh, there is this nice, uh, again, leaderboards with top sellers, uh, secondary, uh, secondary sailors, um, filters, all sorts of things like that. Uh, yeah, so that that's a small intro into the marketplace. The, basically, the marketplace uh, side of that grown grown a lot, and Verbal now is like the second largest uh, NFT marketplace. Um, and we see the pendulum uh, swinging back. And now you don't want to create your own uh, NFT with just clicking the form where, well, a lot of people still want to do, but a lot of people now, okay, we want to create our own NFT experience. And you hearing me here today probably also want to create your own NFT experience. So for you, we've created the whole new product. It's called Verbal Protocol. What that is, is basically we took the uh, infrastructure behind Verbal.com marketplace and created a separate product out of that developer friendly protocol that you can build your NFT marketplace or NFT uh, issuance tools or NFT uh, storefront or just DAO that holds NFT basically any any uh, NFT experience that needs to be able that needs to to be able to buy or sell or just display NFTs. So uh, the the pendulum is swinging back. Everyone is creating their own experience, and we at Parable, we over these two years, we learned how hard that is to build an NFT marketplace. Yeah, we spent we spent a couple of years in that, and uh, there is a lot of work. The big part of that work is actually indexing the database of all the NFTs. The database of what happened to all NFTs. For example, when the particular NFTs was born, uh, then who it was transferred to, then who bought or sold it or listed for sale, and then eventually if it was burned, when it was burned. So all this information is available uh, on the blockchain, but not in the right way. You can't just go to the chain and say, oh, give me all the NFTs from all the smart contracts that I my wallet owns. That's that's not possible with just directly in the, uh, directly communicating with blockchain, with the Ethereum blockchain. That's why um, we we created variable protocol. So 
verbal protocol, uh, the best essentially it is the uh, set of smart contracts and an indexing on top of that, indexing solution on top of that. Set of smart contracts allow, uh, allow you to issue NFTs and trade NFTs. Um, issuance on the issuance side, on the creating NFTs, we do support uh, uh, built-in royalties into the NFTs and we support lazy minted. So you can create NFTs with an API call with the signature without any gas price. So lazy mint, minting as deriving is deriving uh, gas prices to the buyer. So you can create NFTs for free, but then when the buyer wants to buy it, uh, it he pays the gas price for minting. So uh, that's that's interesting part about uh, about uh, about minting. Then there comes an exchange contract. An exchange contract uh, is similar to uh, to the uh, known concepts of how either Delta or Zero X worked for ERC twenty tokens, but now it's for ERC seven twenty one. So what you do want to know about exchange contract is uh, it operates as the order booked exchange. So if you want to sell something, you need to create a sell order. If you want to buy something, you need to create a buy order. In terms of NFT, that means if you want to list your NFT for sale, you need to create a sell order. If you want to put a bid on the NFT, you, you need to make a buy order. If you want to buy NFT that is listed for sale, you need to make a buy order because there is already a sell order. So it's basically just the sell order and the buy order. Uh, it's an order book exchange. Then uh, this order books exchange, it, uh, there are different types of order book, order book exchanges. And the one that we operate at Parable is basically the orders order book the orders are stored off chain and they are executed on chain what that means that if you want to create an order that means that you just need to sign the message you work you you only need to sign the order so it's signature based order and then it's stored off chain then uh, you create a buy order so for example you sign a sell order uh, and and stored it off chain and then you need to create a buy order uh, you stored that off chain too now when you have two corresponding buy and sell orders you can take this two, go to the smart contract and execute them execution is basically a smart contract would take uh, one asset of one person and exchange on another uh, to to another asset of another person so uh this is this is how it works so the best mental model for variable protocol is basically that uh, variable protocol is a cross-chain uh, NFT DEX. So like like Uniswap for NFTs, for you, you can think about it like that. Um, so uh, the best part about exchange uh, that contract set of contracts that we have is that it allows all sorts of flexible payout mechanics. So uh, if you create a sell order or a buy order, you can add your own fees uh, that work on top or just for the front end fees. It, you can you can customize who will receive the payouts. So splits, split payments. If you have a collaboration uh, or of the artists that that are using splits um, that use that want to receive the payment uh, split it to their accounts uh, you can you can use variable protocol for that uh, and variable exchange and of course if you can add your own your own fees that means that your front end is just instantly monetizable you, for example if you want to create let's say the storefront for the 10 best today's 10k collections right uh that are popular and you want basically you want to curate this 10 best 10 key collections you take variable protocol you query 10 uh, collections that you want you assemble a storefront of those and uh, you present it on your own front end to your users you add your own fees and voila in just i don't know in a matter of weeks you have a production fully working monetizable product that 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 generates reven revenue stream um 
so uh, this is this is um, again just a couple examples of how can that be used um, so yeah I've talked about this basically NFT discovery minting and an exchange and and you can monetize all that uh, the royalties important part of the NFT standard but I think everybody is much much more comfortable these days with royalties you take you take royalties you bake them in into the NFTs and and uh, from that moment on they are respected by the variable exchange when exchange sees that an NFT with royalties is uh, swapped it automatically pays out royalties there is also external royalties uh, contract that allows you to set up royalties for any existing uh, contract that didn't have the royalties backed in uh, one more one more thing about variable protocol if you use a front end that works on top of the variable protocol if you create that front end and you actually generate some volume you generate some orders then you are eligible to participate in the app mining program and receive a proportion of rare token distributed weekly to your app for bringing liquidity to the protocol so in monetizable on as as a front end and also receiving the governance token and be able to participate in governance decisions with with your app uh, as you can see there is a bunch of apps already working on the protocol so uh, coco nft is the app that allows you to create uh, to mint nfts from your instagram into the protocol without paying any gas fees the dao house that allows you DAOs to actually hold, buy, and sell NFTs. Zerion guys use variable, variable protocol API uh, for querying the metadata in their uh, NFT extension, and, and, and much, much more uh, uh, cool apps. So, um, yes, I've said about the the app mining and that's more or less all on the overall structure of the protocol so again it's a set of smart contracts and then an indexing layer that listens everything happening in the blockchain so all the sales all the events of nfts being minted burned transferred it all records this and provides you an api to query that of course the api for metadata as well so let's click the documentation and, and explore what do we have here. Uh, so the best resources that you have, that you, you want is this first page that uh, consists of the uh, overall, uh, overall description of how uh, wearable protocol works, how you need to find an asset, create a sell order, accept an order, and all things like that. Uh, so here is this little link that uh, that might be missing uh, is API reference. So if you want to use uh, API for querying NFTs, for finding NFTs that you're looking for, uh, you go you go here, ethereum api .org version 0 0.1. So uh, you open that and here is the open API with all the possible controllers that that you have in the protocol to be able to query uh, the data about nfts let's get a, a little bit ahead uh, this this th those controller might uh, frighten you a little but um, basically we have an item controller we have an order controller uh, and we have nft order we have nft controllers and we have order controllers and we have nft order controllers which uh, stitch uh, this both data together so if you want to query an item you need to go to nft order item controller and you want for example to get nft items by owner here's on the right side you'll see the full url to to claim to use that and let's do that uh i'll i'll claim i'll call this api and i add this owner 
uh, I'll use my own address from MetaMask. Uh, yeah. So here is all my NFTs available. I have a lot of them. Um, for each NFT, you have ID, contract, token ID, unlockable, creators, supply. Oh, that's that's a popular NFT with supply of one more than a thousand. It probably has a lot of cre owners. Uh, yeah, and there is a lot of owners there. So, yep. That's how you use the uh, the API, basically querying NFTs by owner, by creator, by collection. Uh, you can find lazy minted items. You can you can find orders. There is activity controller, super useful controller for understanding of uh, of the actions that happened with specific NFTs that got transferred from, transferred to mint, burn, make a bid, get bid list buy sell all those actions are indexed and available in the nft order activity activity controller uh, yep activity controller allows you it's basically uh the same uh, the same thing that you see under activity on variable com so this is index api then once you have your uh once you have your item um, once you understand that I want to sell an NFT with this contract and this ID, uh, you actually want to go and create a couple of orders. Uh, here you can find, yeah, let's skip that and let's go to tutorials. So we have this protocol exam, tutorials is the second best, uh, second best uh, resource that you can have. We have several tutorials on how to build on top of the protocol. So there is this uh, famous protocol example uh, that uh, that utilizes SDK that we have, and there is the scaffold is uh, scaffold is uh, based version of Rarible Starter app done by our community. So this protocol example is written by our CTO. Uh, it uses Rarible SDK. It allows you to configure SDK, create a lazy minted item create a sell order, purchase that order, and get your own NFT from your current wallet. So this is how you do it. You, you initialize Web3, and then you initialize variable SDK, providing that Web3 uh, to the SDK, and then, then you can uh, you initialize that, and then you can create a mint. So um, here is the mint form that you use. We use TypeScript, so uh, don't be afraid about the types. Uh, basically, in order to mint an NFT, you need to know its uh, collection type, uh, check if that's lazy. Um, yeah. You need to have a token URI, upload your data for the NFT, and then you can mint your item. So I, I suggest you examine this, this protocol example. Then you can you can create a sell order for that item, and you provide some interesting uh, some interesting data here, like what the item you want to sell, what's the amount, uh, who who like who is selling uh here is the origin fees and payouts are these two interesting things that i talked about origin fees is the front end fees is the front end fees that will be paid out to your front end when you use the protocol payouts is the splits how do you want to split the proceeding of that and then you can also fill an order so you can you can execute that order the SDK will prepare all the transactions for you. For example, in order to create a sell order, you need to write an approval and then to sign the to sign the message. Uh, so the SDK will create those transactions for you and will prompt a wallet to give an approval and to sign. So 
uh, this this will be your your best resource for using the protocol and uh, the scaffold is some some more more in, in information here uh, over over the course of of variable protocol action the best uh, the best tools that got popular are the lazy minting so actually creating nfts for free uh, um, and uh, and uh, front-end fees that you can monetize your app with so i'll i'll start i'll stop here and try to answer some questions so uh, let's assemble some questions from the chat. Uh, I, I see a question from Bob about creating a new collection. Uh, so let me try to show you how to create a new collection. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, and there is this contract addresses. You can, you can go here. And here on the mainnet and on Rinkybuy and Rockshan, you can find these two contracts that are called ERC-721 Token Factory and ERC-1155 Token Factory. So these token factories actually allow you to create, to create your own collection. Uh, to create a collection, uh, you can go here, click Write Contract, wait for it to load doesn't load faster for some reason let's check another one yep it loaded up so there is a method create token and you can use my nft collection uh, my nft collection this is the ticker and the base uri you can change that base uri later it would be something like ipfs column slash slash this is the prefix prefix for all your metadata for all your metadata links and this contract uri it's basically the uri for your uh, whole collection so you can use the profile picture and the cover uh, and the cover uh, embedded here uh, you need to assemble the json file with them and upload that to ip and, and put here you can skip that you can skip that uh, field easily and then you click right and the your wallet would, will prompt to create a new collection alternatively you go to the protocol um, you go to the protocol contracts and here is all the set of smart contracts that we have and there is the folder tokens so you go into tokens you click contracts, there is 721 and 1155. Those are the default contracts. You can take any of them and deploy with, with, with Truffle. So the same way you deploy all other contracts. You can also use like any other vanilla ERC721 or 1155. Uh, they would get up, get picked up by the, uh, by the indexer. So there is the question, how do you tune performance? Or maybe ask differently, what are the bottlenecks for performance? How to scale for this DAP architecture? So we can take several, uh, several scaling techniques here. Um, basically, uh, in order to scale, you might want to go, you might want to go um, to layer two and uh we are currently in the works to add uh we are currently in the works to add uh the polygon the polygon l2 to the to the wearable protocol also uh another approach would be to go to l1 and we're working on the flow blockchain to add to the wearable protocol so um yeah this is this is the techniques for scaling the app in general uh, and basically, I wanted to say that we're working on that. And uh, if you're start to build a wearable protocol today, you can be sure that that will scale out 
uh, with your needs as, as you grow. Um, I can see feature requests for royalty splits. Uh, there is a royalty split. And for using an ENS name instead of hard coding an address, you first need to you first need to uh, resolve that ENS name into an address and then use an address in the protocol. So protocol does not support ENS domains domains, but you can resolve them and use just addresses in the protocol. Uh, there is a question, how is this different from Zoro SDK? So uh, the Zora protocol is the fully on-chain protocol that uh, allows you to do auctions and allows you to buy and sell NFTs. So um, the difference with, with them is basically fully on-chain means that you need to pay every time if you want to list something up for sale or, or you want to start an auction. Uh, we do not, uh, we, we use the off-chain architecture and you do not need to pay gas prices to create an order. Uh, that would be the first one. And also the Zora SDK does not have an indexer. So uh, if, you, if you want to use a contract, uh, you need to have an indexer. Um, one of the options would be to use subgraph, but subgraph is only worked for one contract if you have one collection. If you have more than one collection, if you have many collections, uh, then then you want to use more uh, like more robust indexer as as a variable protocol indexer. Yes. Uh, then there is a question from Stephen. Yeah, please. If if I'm not uh, answering your questions fully, follow me up in the chat. I'll I'll be I'll be happy to to re rethink. And, and answer more. Are there fractional sales possible? Yes, you need to use the payouts section of the of the of the uh, sale of the of the order, and that would give you the the fractional sales. You can use multiple uh, addresses, and you set up percentages for those addresses, and they get automatically split and paid out once uh, once this. Uh, sales occurs. What about other chains? So yes, work flow is in the works and Polygon is in the works too. We just deployed on testnet of uh, Polygon on Mumbai. Uh, the protocol is available there, and the latest days of, of deployment to the uh, uh, Polygon mainnet uh, are now. So we can follow up on Discord or in the chat of the hackathon uh, uh, to talk about that. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. This was a really fantastic uh, talk. Um, we can transition to our next session now, um, unless you have any final thoughts. Thank you for having me here today. All right, thank you.